Hey guys, it's Caitlin Riley. And I'm Monica Siriagi. And welcome to Scaredy Chat, a podcast where we talk about all of our childhood fears, plus a few things that are scaring us right now. All right, Scaredy Cats. So today we're super excited. It's a special episode. We're going to talk to later on David Thompson and Leslie Ann Leal from Amazon's new show, Panic. Caitlin, you know all about this show. So give me like what I need to know. Give me the info. Okay. Amazing. So something that you guys should all know about me is that I am obsessed with really like any teen drama, but the teen dramas that like are particularly exciting to me are what I like to call, um, like sexy teen, sexy teen murder shows or sexy teen mysteries, I guess, depending on. Yes. So, um, as some of you may know, I also have a podcast about the show Riverdale on the CW. So this is very much my, in my wheelhouse. Panic is based on the book by Lauren Oliver, same name, and it's an Amazon Prime show. And basically, it is exactly the perfect show to talk about on this podcast because it is sort of like a combination of Fear Factor meets Riverdale meets just honestly the most traumatizing high school experience that you would ever have. Um, But basically, so the show is about Heather this girl who she is in this town of Carp, Texas. She is pretty poor. She doesn't have a lot of opportunities. She really wants to go to college and really make something of herself outside of this small town. Unfortunately, um, for reasons I won't spoil in the pilot episode, that does not work out too well. But fortunately, there is another option. And the option is participate in this game called Panic. And Panic, yes. So Panic is essentially this game where it's over the summer and there's a pot of money. I think it's $50,000 and it's been collected from the high school seniors, I believe since they were freshmen. That's so a everybody lot gives of it- money. So you know from being a freshman that you're donating money that you could potentially win after you graduate. Yes. So I believe it's since freshman year. So it's like a dollar a day. Here's the thing. It is a lot of money in except when I tell you what the money what you have to do for the money. And so it is basically death-defying stunts, fear-inducing things, um, and these these uh, tasks, or not tasks, I guess, like little rounds that you play. I mean, they can range from just, you know, scary, like jumping off a high cliff to, you know, death-defying. And as we learned in the pilot episode, a couple of these teens have actually died uh, oh, playing no. Playing Panic. That's yes. giving me um, Saw vibes. Yes. So it is sort of like Saw, obviously not quite as violent, but there is definitely violence involved. But the, the concept is essentially, you know, these kids have what they believe is nothing to lose. So they're going to face their fears. They're going to do whatever it takes to win this money. But of course, you know, any game like this, it's not going to be that simple. If it was that simple, it'd be a game show. But right. no, these these kinds of yeah. games are <laughs> never fair. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. So there is a, without spoiling too much, you know, there are some people who think maybe this game is rigged. <laughs> There's some questions of, you know, the people who died playing this game. What actually happened to them? Was it just, you know bad luck that they died playing panic and also like where's the money coming from because suddenly the money you know is fifty thousand dollars but does that make sense if everybody's giving a dollar you know is there could there be something more that makes this pool this year when we're starting the show bigger so i don't want to spoil anything too much but basically you will not be disappointed there is so many twists and turns in the show it is absolutely crazy Ooh, but yeah i'm excited and of course, to watch yeah there's also romance and and cute things also too but hey yeah it's, but so, it's not a sexy teen murder drama without a little romance <laughs> exactly exactly so yeah i think uh it'll be really fun i'm especially excited to talk to david thompson and leslie and leal today because i think that they are going to be super fun because they they are basically like the MCs of Panic of the game. So they're the ones, you know, kind of giving everybody the play-by-play, sort of like a sports announcer would, except, you know, it's a vaguely 
murderous <laughs> type of situation. And I, I don't play sports, but I don't think that's very common. No, I, I, I feel they're like the crazy uh, caricature people that do the announcing in the Hunger Games. Exactly. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so fun. That's such a good comparison. You know, the Hunger Games would be worse, I think, than Panic. I think I would much yeah, rather... This, so Panic's not like a battle royale situation where you're all no. thrown in a pit and one person comes out. Right. No, it's definitely not that. <laughs> though I suppose you are still taking your life in your hands, but it's not quite kill or be killed. Though, you know, I mean, kids are bored. Kids are bored and kids, you know, will do anything you know, to get out of their small town. And I feel like that's kind of like the ethos of it, right? Yeah, that... it, it seems like, you know, it it started because it's just like there was, there's something to do. Like the game started as something to do in a small town when it when the town is bored in the summer. And I can relate to that being from a relatively small town. <laughs> so I will say my high school had a similar, though also obviously not even close to the same kind of thing. But, you know, there was kind of like, ooh, the seniors are going to play this big scavenger hunt. And, you know, some of the things were, you know, maybe a little bit not super school sanctioned, but nothing quite like this, um, I will say. Wait, did you did you play at your school? <laughs> no, I did not. I did not play. Um, I Friends of mine played. I did not play. Um, it was definitely, I mean, I was not cool in high school, though I also think I truthfully was not that brave or confident to think that I would be able to like pull that off. So I'm like, you know, why play to lose? (laughs) I play to win. So Yeah, you play when you know you can win. Exactly. That's why I don't, you know, I don't play sports. Like I've I've said before, Um, that seems super hard. Um, And I don't do intense scavenger hunts or I don't know if scavenger hunt is the right word. Um, I don't, I don't, did you ever think about going on Fear Factor when that was like popular? Yeah, and I never wanted to. But I, I had no <laughs> I interest. I always <laughs> thought about it because I, when I was a kid and like reality TV was a big deal, I always thought, oh man, I could totally, I could totally go on Fear Factor. I could totally go on Survivor, all these things. But then it's like by the time I reached high school, I realized how absolutely not that was. Like that's, I, that's I was hard. not going to do that. The conditions exactly. what they're doing, it's not easy. I know, I know. I know. So I applaud everyone who does those things. <laughs> that does make me wonder, though, like, and anybody listening, please tell us, did your town or did your high school have some kind of panic-esque game where you could play each other and win money or clout or, you know, I'm curious how many small towns do this. I'm just thinking about if anybody was going to play panic without the pool of money and just do it for the clout. <laughs> <laughs> like, just just do it for the clout. <laughs> like, no. All the things they do, which I will not spoil, because I'm sure we'll talk about it later, if you were only doing it, <laughs> so you could be like, yeah, no, I did that. People could be like, whoa, Bitch, good I for did you, that. man. Yeah, I feel like that makes you insane. Yeah, Probably. I, it's, it's for money. It's I feel like the only two scenarios we're participating in something like this is believable is you don't have a choice, like in Battle Royale or Saw, or for money. It's the only way. Yeah, of course. Well, I imagine there are also characters in this show who are not playing. Yes, and that it's that's kind of what is interesting about it. Like, it divides people by, you are playing Panic? Oh, I'm playing Panic and we're friends. And what's going to happen then? Because, you know, it's suddenly very intense. It's not necessarily like Hunger Games where you're battling each other, but it is like, you know, there are stakes. There are stakes in this show, guys. It is it is pretty intense. Well, I'm excited yeah. to hear all about the show and also the real fears of our guests. That's the fun part about today. We've got the we've got the fictional fears that have to be faced in the show, but we also have the real fears that we're gonna hear about from David Thompson and Leslie Ann Leal are right about now. Amazing. Well, stay tuned, Scaredy Cats. Scaredy Cats, everybody listening, this is a very special episode. We have two guests. We have double the amount of fear this episode, all right? From Panic on Amazon, we have David Thompson and Leslie Ann Leal. Hi. Hello, guys. Hi. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for coming on this the pod. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you guys so much for being here. So this show, we just talked about it. It is the perfect show for this podcast. Truly, like we could not have asked for better. Um, And we're so excited to talk to you guys because now we're actually going to be talking to the people behind Panic about the things that make them panic, I guess, basically, right? (laughs) So, but before we get into that, let's, can I give you like a little bit of background on you as people, but then also you in the world of panic, like who yes. do you play? Leslie, if you in? could, um, Leslie, if you could tell us a little bit about you, Leslie, and then who you are in the show as well. Yeah. So hi, everyone. My name is Leslie. I am from the Rio Grande Valley, which is South Texas, really close to the Mexican-American border. That's where I spent most of my life. And then went out to college, got a great family, good people in my life. And in the show, I play Summer Galvo. And um, she is Diggins, who play- David plays, um, like assistant. <laughs> I like to say I think of her as a partner in crime more Aww. so than assistant. Thanks. But thank you. That's cool. I certainly couldn't do it without you. Oh yes, I love that. Well, please, David, tell us more about your you and the other half of this uh, partnership. Um, I grew up uh, a little bit north of New York City and lived there for a while, um, and I've just made my way out to. LA, uh, which moving during a pandemic is kind of a crazy thing to do, but it, uh, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm having a blast. Um, my character is Diggins. Uh, fun fact, his name was initially Diggins Johnson, and then it became Daniel Higgins because that is, um, a real name that you can explain. Uh, but I am the MC of the games and, um, I kind of, lead the people through the challenges and kind of put, um, you know, a, uh, a big smile and a happy face on, um, you know, these kids doing these, uh, very, uh, inadvisable activities. <laughs> very inadvisable is, uh, for sure an understatement once you get a little bit later into the show. Uh, but Wow. I mean, you guys put such a great spin on it, you know, as we were comparing you to Stanley Tucci in the Hunger Games a little bit. Yes. But, yeah. Ooh. We're like, what would you rather be in Panic or the Hunger Games? So we decided collectively, I think, on Panic because I think you have. Yeah. 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 You, you have a it's shot. Not, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not assured to end in everyone's death. Right. You know? it, we were talking about that, too. We're like, I was like, is this like a battle royale situation? And King was like, no, 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 no. And I was like, oh, OK, good. <laughs> In the initial pilot, people were kind of dying left and right. Um, and then I think they were like, oh, maybe we just shouldn't kill off all these kids. <laughs> maybe not. Um, right. There's so many people you'd have to hire then. It'd be, you know. Oh, yeah. So many people. But, I mean, that's super fun. So one of the things, you know, I don't know if you've listened to any of our other episodes, but just as a little recap, so we talk every week to uh, different fun guests like you guys about things that scared them when they were kids. And then also we get into things that are scaring us right now. But we asked you guys to send us our, a little, you know, a little background of the things that really scared you. And you you guys really delivered, um, like crazy delivered. So thank you so much for that because you had hilarious stories. But Leslie, your story is a little disturbing to me because you framed it in this email like I don't know I'm not really afraid of anything and then you you said and the then most the horrifying story you told was horrific <laughs> horrifying I'm so nervous I was I I would have and I just think you must be the bravest person in the in the entire world because please tell us your story about this spider if you will okay yeah <laughs> so for the longest time I think most people you know, like you, like we mentioned, we talked to Sam Collins, shout out Sam Collins, about arachnophobia and being afraid of spiders. I was afraid of anything that, you know, could potentially kill me with a bite of venom. And so, um, terribly afraid of spiders. But then one day I, uh, woke up and my leg was hurting. And I remember I made a joke and was like, Oh, I think, I think I got bit by a spider. That would be scary. But then weeks passed by and like I slowly couldn't walk anymore. And then eventually I started getting a fever and I didn't really tell anybody about this. I thought it was something that would heal on its own and it didn't. My leg just got bigger and bigger. And then eventually I like 
like kind of collapsed at school and they're like, you should go to the doctor. And so we did. And they're like, you have a fever. I was like, yep, I do. And, um, I was like, also, I can't walk. And they're like, what's wrong? And they cut my pants and we're like, that's a brown recluse spider bite. You need to go to the hospital for amputation. And I was like, what? I didn't even know what amputation meant, but my mom started crying. So I started crying. And then she was like, can we do anything? What, what can we do? And they said, nothing. We got to get her to the hospital. So we went to the hospital. My mom begged and pleaded that something, there could be a different solution. And there was. I ended up like being homeschooled for a little bit and like having different procedures done, but I got to keep my leg. I got a cool scar and it like, you can feel the dent. You can like put water in the dent and like it'll hold <laughs> because it's like a little bit of. <laughs> Oh my um, god. Yeah. You after poor that, I just like <laughs> wasn't afraid of spiders. Like after that I was like, well, I feel the worst that could happen is, you know, maybe this. And like now I felt like I had superpowers. Every time my leg hurt, a spider was close by. I was like, I am Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Woman, Spider-Man. Oh my person. god, you are literally Spider-Man. So I have to say, <laughs> your reaction to this is so, I feel like this just says such positive things about you as a person, like such good energy, such good vibes, because <laughs> if that happened to me, and then a spider was by my leg every time it hurt, I'd be like, it's coming to finish the job. Like, that, <laughs> like that's what's happening here. That's so concerning to me. But I'm so happy you're okay. I'm so happy that you got to keep your leg. Thank you. I would also me be too. terrified of maybe going to the doctors after that because they just want to they want to chop your leg off. It sounds like it sounds like that doctor was a little chop happy. Like just we got. I'm ready to chop some stuff. I want to chop this leg off because I feel like it. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Honestly, Leslie, I, was I can't. Like, no, David, please. No, Leslie, I can't believe that I've known you for two years now, and and you've never brought this up. You've like never mentioned the time that you were bitten by like the most dangerous spider in the world, and then a doctor told you you were going to lose your legs. Like this is the first time hearing of this. That's wild to me. <laughs> and, and and you're saying it with such a large smile. <laughs> Yeah, no, Leslie has not stopped smiling this whole time telling this story. I, I applaud you, honestly. This is this is such a good attitude because this would mess a lot of people up. But spiders don't scare you now, which is I think is the most mm -hmm. amazing part, that you have no fear of spiders at all. Yeah, don't get me wrong. They're still creepy. They're still like, mm -hmm. oh, but I'm like, you know, if it bit me, I'd probably be okay. We could yeah. find a solution. <laughs> so, David, yes, why don't David. we talk about you and your yes. fears? David, when I read your fear, I was like, I relate to this hard because I was also afraid of this specific kind of girl for a lot of my life. So please tell us about her and your fears. When I was a kid, I didn't really watch many horror movies. Like, I liked spooky things, but not scary things. Like I was a big fan of like Nightmare Before Christmas and just all kinds of like Halloween stuff, you know. But when it came to, like, actual horror movies, I kind of steered clear until I was um, a little older. But I, re I have vivid recollections of seeing the trailers for both um, The Ring and then The Grudge on TV late at night. And this image of just these kind of these these scrawn, you know, these girls just kind of crawling out of TVs and there's always this jerky motion and or standing in your shower or something. I became very afraid uh, that I would be attacked at some point or another by a, uh, a little dead girl. Um, <laughs> and my, I had a neighbor who um love who was really into horror movies and he would really love to kind of antagonize me and i would like w like i would be like eight years old and i'm walking home from my house and i would be like can you walk me to like the edge of your lawn before we get to my lawn like halfway and we would get there and then he would say watch out for the little dead girl and i would like cover my ears because for some reason that's you know that's like protective um and i would sprint back to my house but um there was a little side street next to my house where I guess a lot of teenagers went to like smoke weed and stuff. And so I would, and so I, if I was like out kind of later in the evening on my lawn, I would, I re just recall seeing these figures like standing at the edge of my property or just behind the tree line, uh, just kind of doing their own thing, 
but I all it, it always kind of was very unnerving to me um, on a, a deep level that there were just kind of people just watching me, um, and and they were probably unnerved by me that because I was because um, they were you know the high fifteen year olds and, and I was and they're a like child. oh there's little kids watching us smoke in this alley. <laughs> Like, why is he staring at us? Afraid for different reasons. So I understand that. Yes. Leslie, you were having such a visceral reaction to these stories about the ring. Please, please hop in because you look like you have something to say. David. David. I mean, I cannot tell you how much I relate. And it was one of the things I wrote to them about in the email about the grudge, and I didn't include the ring because I was like, maybe I'm saying too much now. But the ring specifically, we, my, my family decided to watch it on an Easter Sunday. And we were like, let's watch it. <laughs> Everybody gathered around and watched the ring. And I couldn't look at TVs. I didn't want to look at, I didn't want to take showers anymore. Like, <laughs> I feel you, David. <laughs> what a bold Easter movie. <laughs> that is the wildest family Easter event I've ever heard of. What do you guys watch on Christmas? <laughs> I, you know, I don't, we're, they, we are kind of crazy, I guess. But I mean, <laughs> ever since then, like, I just can't watch The Grudge. I can't watch The Ring. It terrifies me. I can't look at Wells. Like, long you black can't. hair scares me. <laughs> and that was such a, that was such a J-horror thing. Like, very angry dead girls with long hair. There's so many movies where she was wronged and her hair is past her butt and she's coming for you. Like, <laughs> That's like a constant. She has amazing I, hair, takes care of it so well, but she's going to kill you. So, David, I would love to know if there was a point in your life where you were able to uh, overcome this fear of scary uh, horror horror teens. Still terrified of teenagers. I uh, can't say <laughs> that I've ever overcome that. Um, Valid. <laughs> I... Uh, I think it, it, it really kind of hit a boiling point or it kind of, uh, it, it was at its worst when um, I had this old cat when I was a kid that um, as I started getting a little older and it started getting a little older, it would let out these, we had to kind of keep it in the bathroom at night, otherwise it kind of might throw up around the house or something. And it would start to let out these cries. And I remember the first time that I really noticed it it, there was like a human quality to it. And I could have thought, I could have sworn I was hearing this muffled kind of like ah, ah, coming from my bathroom at night. And it shook me. I was shocked. It was the most terrified, I uh, visceral fear that I had ever felt in my life. Um, and when I realized it was the cat later, um, I mean, that didn't quell it uh, after it kept on happening. Uh, but but I feel like, I, you know, at that point there was, I said, okay, well, anything kind of creepy in this house, probably just the cat. Don't have to worry about it. And slowly I, and then the cat died and, and I, I, I became, I was victorious over my cat. <laughs> um, you were happy that the cat died. Yeah, it was kind of a relief. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or not because you can't blame all the things in your house on the cat anymore. You know, Were you it's... worried after the cat eventually R.I.P. was deceased? Were you worried that you would still keep hearing that noise? There was a small fear there. Uh, it did not happen. But at that point, it's the cat's ghost. It's a friendly cat. I don't think, yeah. I, you know, I don't have to worry. It's a <laughs> benevolent ghost. So now that we've kind of talked to you guys about the things that you feared in the past, you know, you're part of the show that is all about fear. First, before we get into what you think is the scariest part of the show, I'm just curious, like, what did you guys think when you read this script for the first time? Were you like, oh, my God, like, I can't believe that, like, I might be, you know, on a show that is such extreme things happening? What was your favorite part? What what was the thing that scared you, I guess, the most in the pilot when you were holding that script? Or what was the thing that excited you the most, rather, in the pilot? Yes, David, would love to hear from you on that, if you don't mind. Um, I thought it was so exciting that it was this kind of, um, you know, show featuring these teenagers, but it had all these cool genre elements, and it kind of goes to some dark, interesting places um, and has a cool mystery at its center. Um, 
yeah, I th- I think it's I just thought it was really cool that they were um imbuing this show with all these things that I think that it appeals to um, you know, a wide variety of people and that we, you know, Leslie and I get to uh get to lead people into the fray. I thought, you know, it's fun to um be be a big a showman and kind of the center of attention. <laughs> and Leslie, what about you? What did you what did you think of reading something a script that was so scary and something that you might end up working on? You know, I the first thing I think about is just like the audition process. I remember like just receiving sides to audition and being like getting like those full body. I don't know if you guys get those, but I get like full body like shakes and like I just I still don't watch a lot of horror anything and like so <laughs> to read a script that I'm like oh this is creepy this is crazy this is wild you know um and then to be a part of it and see it happening I'm it it was like even surreal to I know I mean I we knew what was going on <laughs> like while we were filming but even then it was like it's creepy to me like crazy like this is crazy and even watching the show now I'm like oh my gosh I'm, like nervous I'm like sitting there just like I'm terrified well, now these people it's are your amazing, friends yeah. and coworkers who are doing these crazy things. So I can imagine yeah. you're like, wait, I'm a little concerned about you, actually. When yeah. I'm watching, it's like a visceral reaction you can't control. David, do you have any ready to go your uh, top three scariest panic challenges? I would be happy to take the baton, Leslie. Um, there is a challenge where the players have to um trespass onto someone's property and perhaps even break into their home and take things from um the 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 space and what they are not prepared for is that uh the owner is ready for them or or uh you know is is uh has his defenses up and and you start, uh, and it gets it gets a little dicey. Um, so that is kind of terrifying to me yeah. because then I feel like I'm on you know the tail end of Home Alone, um, and uh, that's not a good place to be. You don't want to be the person who is um, you know doing the home invading when uh, you know they're they're ready for you. So that sounds a little frightening. I think we have to acknowledge that, David, I hate to be the one to tell you this. I think you may also be afraid of the movie Home Alone. (laughs) Yeah, it's come up quite a few times. What is it about? When did Home Alone hurt you? That's all we want to know. Home Alone was one of the few VHSs that we would bring onto like road trips. So I have seen that movie countless times. um, And I guess has probably really sunk somewhere deep in my (laughs) psyche. But I can't, you know, I can't tell who I who I feel for more, uh, Kevin, you know, or these two bungling burglars who just get uh, ruthlessly eviscerated. Someone made this oh. hilarious trailer about it was if Home Alone is a horror movie. Yeah, it's really not that different. It's just like a few music cues, and that's what makes it different. It is literally a soundtrack away from being a horror movie. Like when exactly. he the part where the the one thief is barefoot now and he steps on that nail that was scary. That scared me as you you watch it sink into his foot. Like that's terrifying. That happens in a quiet place. And everyone freaked out. That was like the scariest part of A Quiet Place. Oh and yet in Home Alone, we were like, ha, ha, ha. He was bad, so it's not scary at all. <laughs> I don't know. The same exact thing. And also, let's say he survives, you know, that didn't look like a clean nail. He could have tetanus, you know? He's doing some real damage on these guys. Yes, he's ruining them from the inside out, giving them tetanus, all, like electrocuting them, right? They fully get electrocuted at one point. It's literally the Very movie. Creative. It's the movie Don't Breathe. If you guys have seen that movie, it's literally that movie. I just real this is all just coming into my brain right now. Yeah, Home Alone is scary. Home Alone is scary if you're the part of the burglars and the kid, I guess. But I think yeah. we should be a little bit more sympathetic to the wet bandits. And also, I mean, just one more thing on Home Alone. Poor Buzz, whose room just gets trashed. <laughs> His tarantula is on the loose. You know, that was his pet. He had a lot of love for that thing. Okay. Last word. Hold on. <laughs> oh, oh my God. The inner sibling dynamics. that They need to go to family therapy immediately. 
Immediately. 100%. 100%. Well, okay, we have one more scary panic moment from each of you. One more uh, thing that if you had to do this in real life, you'd be like, no, chilling, I can't do that. I'm out. I lose the panic game. I'm out. There is a um, personal challenge that someone has to That's do uh, say. later That's on in the show um, where someone is given some mystery pills and told to take them. And I don't trust that. <laughs> uh, that's not uh, my speed. I don't want to do that. I'm just not interested. I promise. Leslie, you're nodding. Before you said that, I was thinking about that scene and like that individual challenge in particular. I was like, oh, mm-mm. yeah, you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> Exactly. I think that what's interesting about this also is anybody who has not watched the show yet will be listening to this and will be like, wait, mystery pills. Like, ooh, who's going to get that personal challenge? Who would that be the worst thing for? Like, who's the person who really couldn't handle that? I mean, my so. mind immediately goes to what if it's just an extreme laxative? That's where I go. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Imagine if that's all. It's just embarrassing for you. Like that's just the whole thing. Just it's saying. like, um, did you got? It's like the like the real life like birdie bots, like the Harry Potter beans. You know, where yes. like maybe you get like cotton candy, or maybe you'd have like the booger bean. You know, it, it, there's a really wide range. Could be anything. Those are yeah. Those are real. Like they used to sell them. I remember in movie theaters, and I remember thinking even as a kid, like who. I understand, oh, you bought, like, you know, I bought a box or whatever, and my family would be like, oh, haha, like, oh, this one's gross. But who would, like, choose to eat those in a movie theater? Be like, oh, I'm enjoying my movie. Oh, this tastes like boogers. Like, oh, this tastes like earwax, which, like, is disgusting. Who is that enjoying that as a movie snack? It is a fun um, novelty snack exactly one time. And anyone who <laughs> yes. continues to do so is sadistic and, and likes when their food pranks them, which that's, you know, <laughs> that I want to feel safe uh, when I'm eating. Especially in the dark. Like, why? Like, why are you doing this? So it, uh, it's really making sense to me that both of you play MCs on this show and, and you're kind of do what, what we do for this podcast, you do for the show. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. We don't oh, kill anyone so. by accident, though, on our show. So, so that's yes. on you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, it makes sense. Leslie, do you have one more, or did are you going with mystery pill? Are you team mystery pill? Team mystery pill, and you know that took me. Um, that took me to a moment um, in my childhood when I was given chocolate laxatives. Um, <gasps> oh no. And I thought it was chocolate, a big chocolate fan, huge. Um, Me too. That, you know, you don't want to trust mystery anything. <laughs> You're like, wait, I'm sorry, what Agreed. is happening to me? Yeah, so when we talked about, like, you know, for all you know, it could be a laxative, but it could also be something crazier than a laxative, you know, too. <laughs> personal opinion but <laughs> did you know that it was a chocolate like did was somebody pranking you Absol i guess is yes. my question <gasps> yes someone was pranking you yeah oh this my was god this was real. that's horrible i hope they feel really bad i hope they listen to this and they feel really guilty for ruining chocolate for you you know if you're listening to this i forgive you <laughs> <laughs> oh i, I probably nice wouldn't honestly I, I probably would. <laughs> Leslie's so gonna embrace it. Leslie's gonna give a big hug. You know, scratch them, <laughs> scratch their head, and and everything's good. And that, and they're a big fan of Leslie again. That's how it works. I think it was the brown recluse spider that did that. Honestly, I think that <laughs> they also gave you chocolate lags. <laughs> so that it's really, really trying to ruin your life. I'm convinced it's your enemy. The job. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, guys, um, this is you know. This has been, one, first of all, so fun. You guys are amazing. This has been so fun. I love hearing about all the things that terrified you in childhood and now, and also really getting to know Leslie's, like, you know, positive attitude on life. I think that's amazing. So. It's like a sweet, sweet combination of David's wit and Leslie's just unending positivity that makes for a dream team MC moment. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, well, so this show is streaming now, currently all 10 episodes. It was created by Lauren Oliver. It's based on her book. So if you guys 
you know, maybe you can't handle, you can't handle watching things, but you want to read the book. It's, you know, there's this book. Um, but I hope that you guys watch it because one, I mean, David and Leslie, now you know them so well, can't wait to meet their counterparts on this show. Um, and also see some very terrifying things, some of which are mystery pills, some of which are heights challenges. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Do you guys have anything that you want to plug Let's hear your social medias. Yes. What's going on, guys? Where can our lovely <laughs> listeners find you? I am on um, Instagram at uh, D A W Thompson. Um, nothing to plug. Watch the show. It's a lot of fun. I hope you guys really love it. And you can also find me on Instagram. I am at Leal. That's L E A L Leslie Ann. And also plugging the show <laughs> and my great friends in it. And this podcast, thanks for having us. This is so cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. This was fantastic. You guys are fantastic. Panic is fantastic. And yeah, thank you for, for sharing your fears. And uh, don't trust Macaulay Culkin. I think that's, yeah, that's the ethos of this whole podcast. Do not <laughs> trust Macaulay Culkin. And get your tennis <laughs> shot. <laughs> the two the two big ones yeah, that's the takeaway well thank you david thank you leslie you're both awesome and i'm ready to binge panic tonight i feel like i'm ready now Yay. that you've talked me through it a little bit amazing thank you guys thank you so much for having us this is so fun thank you thank you <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of scaredy chat we hope that you enjoyed all of our talk about panic and please, if you like this episode, don't forget to do at least one of these things. Share this podcast with someone you think will like it. Go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe, rate, and review. We'd be so thankful. And also, if you want to stay in touch with us, follow us on social media. We're on Instagram at scaredychat underscore podcast. And if you want to be a part of the show, send us an email. We're at story at scaredychatpod.com. Security Chat was developed and hosted by Caitlin Riley and Monica Moore Suriyagi. Produced by Jeff Swimmer. Editing and sound design by Fitz Harris. Theme music by Eric Fashingbauer with samples by Jeff Zahn and Jack Lenz. And Gail Gilman is the executive producer. Hold up. 